Hello and welcome. This is Supporting Cross Institutional Criminal Justice OER Teams in Oregon. You may be at this presentation because you are a project leader or a facilitator of a multi-author team, perhaps a cross-institutional team. You may be part of a criminal justice department looking for a new OER developed with an equity lens. My intention today is to provide you with a model for a statewide support team or a project leadership team that can guide authors in textbook development. Our model is built on the foundation that equity-based text and course design leads to high quality, relevant and accessible course materials that increase student outcomes and engagement. So first I'll share what we mean by designing for equity. I'll spend some time describing how we support our authors and the professional development we provide. And I'll also share a link to our four criminal justice course descriptions and learning outcomes. Open Oregon Educational Resources received a grant from the federal government to develop these criminal justice pathways. We promote textbook affordability for community college and university students and facilitate widespread adoption of open, low-cost, high-quality materials. You can visit openoregon.org for more information showcasing what's happening across the state of Oregon. Open Oregon Educational Resources recognizes that our mission, vision, and values are not meaningful unless we account for past inequities. The systemic racism that led to Oregon being founded on stolen land as an all-white state has caused generations of harm. This shapes the experience of Black, Indigenous, and other people of color that live and learn here today. As a statewide program, we must attend to the impact our choices have on Oregon students. Our team provides tools and resources to make diversity, equity, and inclusion primary considerations when faculty engage with open course materials. We also continue to ask questions and learn together. We welcome being held accountable to the ideals in this statement via our contact page. On this slide, you there are two construction safety cones in the image to indicate that this is an equity statement in progress. Designing for equity guides our decisions at every step along the way in this project. From hiring an equity consultant as part of our project leadership team to defining our equity goals as a project and as each author team, to looking critically at the voices and perspectives in our texts and courses. At the forefront of designing for equity is our students' experience with the OER. And every time we have to make a decision about the project or about and the impact a decision might have, we imagine and consider that student in the classroom or online engaging with our OER and what that impact would have. On this slide is an image of four blue circles surrounding that central circle that states the student's experience with OER. The four circles represent the four components that we believe are integral to an equity-based design. The first component is that the text and courses need to be relevant. So our students show up in our text via representation, inclusive language, Oregon specific contexts and open pedagogy assignments. They're accessible, so they're usable by people with disabilities to the greatest extent possible. They are aligned with course outcomes, state course outcomes, and with workforce standards. They're designed with an equity lens, and that to us means that they are designed with a transparent and aligned learning pathway, clear expectations for students, we use principles of universal design for learning, and there are connections between course content and the student experience and engagement. In order to achieve these goals of designing for equity, we have invested in a project team who supports our process and our authors. We have a team with diverse strengths who have both challenged and supported us to reach our goal of designing for equity. On this slide, there's an organizational chart with the statewide open education program director at the top overseeing the project. Just below that is a gray box with the six project leadership roles. An OER research consultant who supports our authors in finding openly licensed content and with learning about attributions. Our instructional editor who supports our authors in textbook development from the outline stage all the way through to uh, editing and recommendations at the chapter half manuscript and full manuscript stages. Our instructional designer 
supports our course pilot instructors in developing and revising course materials to go along with the text. Our instructional technologist primarily works with formatting from uh, content from one platform to another, and they will also assist with H5P development. Our equity consultant advises and makes recommendations to the project leadership team and the author teams. The project manager oversees the timeline and deliverables. Below this gray box are the course, uh, the grant outcomes. So we intend to produce and publish an openly licensed text along with three or more openly licensed courses, course packs that can be shared out to go along with the text. Connected to the openly licensed text are lines leading to the author team, usually one or two lead authors and two to seven contributing authors. Each text is reviewed by peers at the outline and manuscript stage, and a workforce advisory board also reviews the outline as well as pedagogical elements later on in the process. Course pilot instructors implement the OER in their courses and share back feedback about the text for the revision phase. Our author professional development consists of many points of contact. We started primarily with a Canvas course and cohort meetings. The Canvas course was designed to create community and engage our authors in discussion and create a shared understanding about what we were doing. It has evolved into a resource bank where folks go when they need specific resources for the work that they're doing at the time. Cohort meetings were all four of our criminal justice author teams together with the project leadership, doing some team building, creating momentum, and creating a shared understanding of the project path and timeline. Author teams also met uh, individually as an author team with the project leadership to define their course outcomes and their equity goals. And recently, we've seen authors engage more with the project leadership uh, individually. So for example, uh, one or two authors will meet with our OER research consultant to learn about how to do attributions. We've created a number of templates and guides the, that we will be sharing out um, towards the end of our grant. Our templates are intended to be easy to follow models that share the expectations we have with our authors and allow them to follow the directions easily and produce what we would like um, to see. We've also created guides when we notice that we're answering the same questions from authors over and over. We've seen the complexities of developing textbooks in 2022. I'm sure you all have some experience with this as well and have noted the need to remain nimble and flexible as uh, multiple authors and project leadership team members face personal and professional challenges and as we all continue to navigate um, working both in person and online. So these are some questions that we continue to ask ourselves, and I'm wondering if they resonate with you and the work that you're doing. The first question asks, when should we empower authors by providing them the training to do the work themselves versus when should we focus on reducing their workload and doing it for them? I think this is a, is a future cited question, thinking about what would authors need and want, what skills would they like to have outside this project as they move on in their careers. Number two asks, what kind of relationships and connections are better made at the institutional level? We've noticed that, for example, our OER research consultant provides openly licensed content to our authors. Would it be better for our authors to engage with the OER librarian at their institution and create that relationship and connection? Or are we providing a service by taking that work off of that OER point person's plate? Number three, I think, is a perennial question about learning that I'm guessing we can all relate to about how and when do authors learn best? Do they learn uh, by being prepared with training or at point of need? Do they learn synchronously or asynchronously? And number four asks how we can be intentional with our equity consultant participation. We sometimes engage them in an ad hoc way, and we'd like to clearly define how and when they contribute to our project. This last slide might answer some of your questions. On the top right, you can click on this link that says course descriptions and see a project description for each of the four criminal justice courses we're developing along with their course outcomes. Our OER textbooks will be available around spring 24 and the course packs around fall 23. You can email me if you'd like to be notified of their release. 
I welcome any other questions you have, and I appreciate you coming to this session. Thank you.